Hello everybody. In this video I'm going to cover adding and subtracting fractions. I'm going to take you through just three examples. In all of these examples they are proper fractions, meaning they're not mixed numbers, they're just regular old fractions with no whole number out in front. So <clears throat> my first example I have 5 eighths plus 1 eighths. Now in order to add or subtract any fractions you need to make sure that their denominators are the same. Now in this example, the denominators are the same. They're in eighths. So I have five eighths and I'm adding one eighth. So all you have to do is just add their numerators up. Five plus one is six. And then their denominator is going to stay the same. You're adding eighths. The denominator just describes what type of fraction it is. So I have five and I have one and now I have six. Five eighths, one eighth, six eighths. Now six eighths is not in simplest form. I can reduce this by dividing by two and dividing by two. And then I get three fourths, and that is in simplest form. So you basically just add your numerators and you keep the denominators if they have denominators that are already the same. Now, of course, in my next example, the denominators aren't the same. So here I have four fifths minus one third. So again, my denominators aren't the same. So I have to make equivalent fractions that have the same denominators. So uh, some people do this vertically. I like to do it, whoops. Some people do this vertically. I like to do it um, horizontally. I keep my equivalent fraction. I just put right underneath 4 fifths. So looking at 5 and looking at 3, I need to think of what are the multiples of 5 and 3. Can I find the lowest common multiple? And so I usually start with the bigger number. 5, 10, 15 works for 3. So I'm going to write a 15 and a 15, and I'm going to change both of these to be over 15s and then subtract. So 5 in order to become 15 needs to be times by 3. So I'll multiply the top by 3, and 4 times 3 is 12. So there's my first equivalent fraction. And then in order to make 3 into 15, I have to do times 5, and whatever I do, to the denominator, I have to do the numerator in order to keep it equivalent. So 1 times 5 is 5, and then just simply subtract. Now my now you can see, just like my last example, my denominators are like, so I can just subtract the top. So 12 minus 5 is 7. Keep my denominator of 15ths, and this is already in simplest form. So I am done. 4 fifths minus 1 third is 7 fifteenths. In the last example here, I have 7 eighths plus 5 sixths. So again, I usually start with my bigger number and I'll do the multiples of my bigger number until I know which one works for the other one. So 8 doesn't work for 6, uh, 16 doesn't work for 6, 24 works for 6. So I'm going to do 24's going to make these both 24's. This is an addition problem. And then in order to make 8 into 24, I have to do times 3. So the numerator is going to be 7 times 3, which is 21 24 And then 6 has to be times by 4 in order to get to 24. And then, so 5 times 4 is going to be 20. So now I have like denominators, and now I can actually add them. So I'm going to keep my denominators the same, obviously. 21 plus 20 is 41. Now 41 over 24 is an improper fraction. 24 goes into 41 once. And then there's a certain number of things left over. I'm going to go down here and do 41 minus 24. I know that it goes in once evenly. But in order to figure out what's left over, I'm going to subtract. 11 minus 4 is 7, 1. So 17 is what's left over. And 17 24 is in simplest form. Sometimes I'll have to reduce that too. But now I have a mixed number because when you add these two fractions, you get more than one. So that is just a pretty much straightforward, pretty quick example of just adding and subtracting fractions. Remember, make the denominators the same. If they aren't the same, you have to make them the same. Good luck.